Are you looking for professional training in forensic mental health? My name is Steve Hart. I'm a professor of psychology at Simon Fraser University. My area of expertise is clinical forensic psychology. I trained as a clinical and forensic psychologist and, and that's what I teach now and that's where I do my research. And my specific area is violence risk assessment and management. So intimate partner violence is one of those things that cuts across um, all different contexts. Uh, if you work in uh, um, civil mental health, forensic mental health corrections, either institutional or community corrections, if you work in policing, if you work in uh, organizational settings with um, uh, people who are in human resources and so forth or with workplace violence, you have to know about intimate partner violence. It's one of the most common forms of violence. Thinking about violence is like thinking about the weather. Around the world, the best weather forecasts seem to have a natural time horizon of four to five days. Beyond four to five days, eh, it kind of gets down to really no, no better than chance. Does that make sense to you? And I would say for us thinking about human behavior, this is mostly going to be in the neighborhood of months up to a year or so. Pretty hard to think about what's going to be going on in somebody's life two years from now. What do we need to do to change what we just talked about to talk about intimate partner violence? One of them is we're changing the definition of violence, right? It's not just any harm. So instead, what we're going to do, I'm going to use the term intimate partner violence. You can't call it spousal assault, domestic assault, partner assault. It's called lots of things in different places. It doesn't matter to me. But we're going to define it as actual attempted or threatened physical harm of a current or former intimate partner. For me, it doesn't care whether it's the same sex or different sex relationship or, or what kind of relationship it is, as long as it's a close, romantic, sexual relationship of somebody that's established um, and is not an intrafamilial one. We went back one year in British Columbia and reviewed all the intimate partner homicides in the province. We looked at 13 cases of intimate partner homicide, which resulted in like 24 fatalities. Because in a lot of cases, it's kids and in-laws and new partners and so forth that get killed as well, or co-workers. And of course, in one third of the cases, the perpetrator, him or herself, is dead, right? That's true internationally, statistics. One third of all people who kill their intimate partners are dead within 24 hours by their own hands. To learn more about Concept's professional training opportunities, visit us at concept-ce.com.